I'm Sue MP. I look after the master's courses at Cranfield University in materials. I'm here today with David Arthur, Head of Member Services at the Institute of Materials, Mining and Minerals. What motivated you to pursue a career in materials at Cranfield? Part of the reason was we're talking mid-80s. Yes. We're talking the last big recession. So I came out having studied metallurgy at Manchester with a lot of other metallurgists looking for work. Um, not a lot of work around, so it was a question really of what do I do now? And I was offered the chance to study here whilst being employed as a research assistant. Mm. So the idea really was a, a PhD program based on offshore engineering, but a chance to gain a bit of experience for me on research, development, at a time when jobs were a little bit more difficult to come by. So mm. quite similar to the situation you know, today. So it really bought me a bit of time and opportunity to think about what I wanted to do whilst being paid and studying. So I now look after member services for the Institute of Materials, uh, but the Institute has got a commitment that where possible its staff understand the communities that our members work in, because we're looking after material scientists, materials engineers. Um, so our CEO is committed to having people you know, like myself who've got the same sort of technical academic background to the people where we have as members, yes. you know, our customers. We look to credit the MSc and the mm. Master's programmes that you know, you're running mm. um, because it then gives students who study those and then go into industry or into, say in academia the opportunity to get what most people are looking for which is Chartered Engineer, CENG. Mm. And that's what really we're about today, partly. Me coming back here, talking to the students yes. you've got on doing the master's programme, mm. who are accredited. Um, we hope they will progress into you know, fully rounded materials engineers um, and chartered engineers with it. Really building on your academic background and then whatever professional experience they then go on to do, it's a ladder. Mm. And the idea is that the, the course they've done here gives them an extremely good foundation. Mm. And it's just being aware of what you do afterwards and how exactly. you do it, in the same yeah. way as I did, really. Yeah. But it wasn't as structured then. You had to find your own way through to some extent. Mm. Um, the well, Institute's more proactive these days in trying to sort of help people professionally develop. We are very aware of the technical side, but also the, I suppose, the soft skills, the, the professional development and mm -hmm. the personal development of the students. But what key skills do you think are essential for, or, or sh you should, people are looking for when they're considering postgraduate study, those? Well, I think the key thing these days, Sue, is flexibility, really, that as well as having and being able to demonstrate their academic prowess mm. and the fact that they you know, can take on board the science and engineering and how it applies to the real world is the interpersonal skills that we all yes. need, uh, presentation skills, mm. standing in front of cameras, yes. doing interviews and things. Yes. But, um, really, you mentioned the soft skills, but a lot of it comes down to presentation skills, being able to communicate. Mm. Um, I've certainly found that we come across a whole range of people, you know, we've got um, things like lecture competitions which we, we run for, yes. for younger members, students. Yes. And it just shows how things have come on mm -hmm. because you're talking about fairly young, inexperienced, want-to-be engineers who've got a complete range of skills and it blows your mind mm -hmm. in terms of their abilities. Um, mm -hmm. It's a competitive very, world very, out there. Exactly, and very talented. Anything they can do yeah. in terms of these soft skills and having just that little bit extra mm -hmm. uh, could make the difference when they come you know, come to look for a job. Over so. the time you've been here, there's been a lot of development and changes in the courses, and um, group projects, group mm -hmm. activities, communicating within groups are uh, one of the ways that we, um, well, the students very much like that sort of aspect where you're working with people that you don't necessarily choose to work with, but it's an essential part of the training. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, so that's 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 an activity which which is, is highly regarded. Mm. Um, and as you know, as part of the, the Institute's accreditation of courses like the mm. programmes you run and elsewhere across the world, one of the key things that we look for is a, is a group project. 
mm. because again it's just showing how people interact, how they work together, um, so that they're not you're not just breeding a a nation of prima donnas, but people who can actually work together and in, share ideas, share experiences, mm. and the group project mm. is the obvious way to to see how that dynamic mm. works. We're keen to get the best students into materials sector and materials based subject, and industry seem to want very traditional skills still. Mm -hmm. Oil and gas is very up and coming, still a big employer. And seeking metallurgists. However, the students are very keen on some of the different subjects, I suppose, and, and keen on sustainability, environmental awareness, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and it's trying to match <coughs> industry needs with those of stu student aspirations. seeking aspirations. And do you see, I mean, have you got any, any comments on, on that sort of thing? This is a struggle we have. There is by and large a shortage of good quality materials engineers, metallurgists, yes. call it what you will. Um, that British industry is, is, is saying there will be a skills shortage. And as people are the experienced materials engineers are moving on, retiring, mm. they haven't historically been, been replaced. And it's a question of feeding through. It looks like the corner's being turned. This country is producing more materials graduates now, mm. you know, through places like you know, Cranfield and elsewhere to fulfill that need. Um, people can realise that it's, it can be a rewarding career it can be an enjoyable career and it can be financially rewarding. Yes. You don't have to do as a lot of materials graduates do, disappear into the city, into financial business world. Yeah. You can still stay in engineering and have a rewarding, enjoyable career doing something sexy. Mm. It doesn't have to just be dirty fingernails and mm. greasy hands day in, day out. It's nothing, nothing like that. You can be working on cutting edge, state of the art work, whether that's for you know, people like Rolls-Royce within the nuclear industry or in the sort of motorsport, typical Formula One, that, you know, that type of area. And it is a very dynamic, dynamic um, area. Things move, things change and... Things change very, very yeah, fast. Very quickly. Very quickly. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, you see it, we see it in terms of the interest that our members have, that mm. it moves very, very quickly and that's part of the challenge. And that's, what, I guess, what we're looking for and what we're trying to breed are people who when you talk about the skills and what they need and what courses like yours can offer mm. um, is being able to pull this sort of creative thinking together and we're doing a heck of a lot of work with the design community for that very reason yes. wanting to understand how design materials can come together and produce something that does the job but also looks good. We, we, um, it's interesting you say that there's a couple of things I want to pick up on one is um, the, the success that the graduates are having and we're very pleased that our, our graduates are going into jobs very quickly and, mm -hmm. and this, this is uh, a big stepping stone and, um, for, for the students to move straight into employment mm. um, or, or to fur do further research or whatever they, they, are, they aspire to do. Mm. But uh, interesting you say about the design as well. This is something that we're, we're doing, working quite a lot with now. And developing new courses which link design and materials, health, aerospace sector. There's a whole range of links that we need to adapt. The industry needs to adapt and work together as, as do uh, those that will be coming in the future. Yeah, I think um, that a lot of the traditional industries are are adapting. Mm. I mean, the Institute's quite heavily involved in a government program, which is the Materials Knowledge Transfer Network, yes. Materials KTN. And that's bringing industry, academia together. And one of the key successes that's come out of that program is engaging with the design community. So, if, if you like, the tra traditional designers who perhaps wouldn't have looked at material science with any, anything other than thinking, well, it's a, it's a material. Uh, you know, there's nothing, so what? Mm. They're now beginning to realise that they can adapt that material, they can change it, they can process it differently. But it's because the two, pe the two bodies are coming together. Yes. The materials engineer is working with a, perhaps a graphic designer or a creative designer mm. to produce something different that's making mm. the use of both skill sets. Yes, and so that was different to, you, you wouldn't have had that 10 years ago, no, never, mind, and, and never mind 20 years ago. 
So I'd just like to thank you very much for your comments and thank you for spending some time with us today. Okay, thank thanks you for the invite, Zane.